Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. In this week's guitar lesson, we're going to take a look at a solo bluegrass composition that I'm playing on acoustic guitar. Now, bluegrass obviously sounds best when you play it acoustically, but if all you have is an electric guitar, you can play this on that and it'll sound great. And so you can play this either way, so there's no excuses. If you want to learn how to play it and you have a guitar and a pick, that's all you need. Uh, that's what's nice about these solo compositions are you don't there's not a lot of setup all you need to, is to do is grab a guitar and you can control the tempo that's another added bonus so if it's too fast or whatever you can slow it down and get it where it's comfortable for you another added bonus is that you can play a composition for other people when you're learning to play a guitar a lot of times people want to know what you're up to what can you play and so this gives you a composition that you can play from start to finish and it's something that you can add to as well if you wanted to. So we're going to take everything that I played in the intro, break it all down note for note. Uh, I'm going to explain the strum pattern as well as the first part uh, of what, what I played in this video. If you'd like to watch the second half as well as download the tablature and have access to the on-screen tab viewer for this lesson, you can get all of that at ActiveMelody.com. You're just going to want to look for EP172. That's a lesson number for this lesson. I should also mention if you like this lesson, this style of lesson. I've got lots of them. I put out a new lesson every Friday and um, there's just there's hundreds of lessons like this, in-depth lessons at activemelody.com. So check that out if you haven't. Just go to the lessons section and I've got everything categorized. I've got even a category of, it's called no accompaniment. So if you like these little solo compositions, I've got a whole category of that. So you can see all the other ones. A lot of blues, there's jazz, there's some country, uh, you name it. It's all there. So anyway, I just wanted to throw in that little extra plug. Let's go ahead and get started with part one. All right, so we're going to start this with a pretty non-conventional bluegrass thing. I, w I like to throw in my own little signature on some of these things, and I thought it would be kind of interesting, at least to me, to start with a D9 chord, pick the notes out of the chord, and then I went to a G13 chord, which you never hear really in bluegrass, and then to the one. I just thought it kind of, it reminded me of something I might have heard Chet Atkins do. Maybe that's where I got that. Um, but, so instead of playing, uh, in bluegrass is a 1-4-5 chord progression for the most part. A lot of bluegrass is. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm starting on, it would, in this, if we were counting the numbers, this would be a major second. Then to the 5. Then to the 1. And so that's kind of uh, how you want to think of it if you're in the number system. Um, so once I get to the one, I go into this little strum stop, which is really useful if you don't know it, then it's pretty easy to do. What I'm doing is I'm playing a C chord, first position, I'm going to assume you know how to make that chord, and I'm using just down strokes and playing the fifth string and then the sixth string. Fifth string, sixth string. Now look what's happening. So this is my bass part, and you can see my ring finger jumps from the third fret fifth string to the third fret sixth string and it goes back and forth these two fingers stay down the whole time so it looks like start start this by just getting the bass part and find whatever tempo is comfortable for you so that's the first thing you're doing just down strokes with the right hand now we're going to add to that we're going to add down uh, down strokes on, in between those strumming the chord like this little country rhythm you could consider that bluegrass it could be folk but you hear that style of strumming and a lot of stuff and you'll if you're new to this you're gonna find that this is not really that hard to do and it sounds really good it kind of enhances your playing it makes you sound like you've got a bass player and now I'm using a little palm muting in with that just to kind of not let it sound like this 
didn't, I didn't want it to ring out too much. So, but just by, as I come down, kind of tapping it with my palm on my right hand, you have a little more control over that, how long the, the notes ring out. Okay, so I go through that four times. Uh, and each of those four times, I'm well, no, the three of the four times I'm playing the fifth string and the sixth string. So we got one, two, three. Now on the fourth, I just go the fifth string. So I don't have time to go to the sixth string because the melody starts here and it goes. So here's what it looks like again three, four. And then now we're set up to go back to the one on the next measure. Okay, so here's the notes of that. Now we're the good thing about uh, well, it's not a good thing. This is one of the things about this is we're going to keep the chords down as much of the chord down as we can. So I'm going to keep these two fingers down as uh, as I'm playing through the C part, and that's because in between the melody parts. I'm going to be playing rhythm. So really this is, you could think of this as kind of a call and response where the call is the lead part and the response is the rhythm. Um, and uh, that's very common in bluegrass where you're, you've, you're kind of having to double up. You're playing both rhythm and lead, not at exactly the same time. You can see how the one hand, our, our, the one technique is to do the down up, down up, down up. And in between those down ups, you're playing little melody parts. So it, it's, I'm probably making it sound more complicated than it is. We're going to break it down and you'll be able to do this, even if you're fairly new to playing. Okay, so we've got these two notes out of the C chord. We're going to do a down stroke on the fourth string. Then we're going to add our ring finger here on the third fret fourth string, another down stroke. And then the open G string. So that's the first part of your melody. Keeping these notes down, right? Now watch this. See that down up? That's playing just this part of the C chord. So we're playing, trying to hit strings four, three, and two. And then on the up stroke, I'm trying to just hit string two. It gives you a consistent sound if you can try on that up stroke to always try and hit the same note. Now the nice thing about holding a chord down is if you're sloppy, and we all are, especially if we're playing something real fast, and you bump another string, it's okay because it's going to be a note in the chord. So just remember that, but try, slow it down, set a metronome, and try and do that. Just to hit that one string on the upstroke. Okay, now the next part goes. You can see I just bumped the one string there. So, back, backing up we have, there's the down up, then I keep my index finger down and I hammer on with my middle finger onto the second fret, third string. Then take that off and play just the open third string. And then come back to where I was in the C chord, which is on the second fret, fourth string. So that's the second part of the melody. It goes like that. And then we follow that up with a down up. Okay, so here's what it sounds like if I put those two pieces together. That's going to be the challenge for you is when you learn these things, you learn them in little chunks. Um, and, and the chunks are probably not that hard to do on their own. The challenge will be putting them together and keeping the timing consistent. That's the key to the whole thing. So find a tempo that's comfortable for you. In the beginning, it's going to be really slow, but just try and get consistent. Over time, you'll get a little faster with it and you'll be able to do this quicker. If this sounds familiar to some of you, I took at least the beginning part. I'm sure this came from the Wildwood Flower, for those of you who know, know that song. That's where that comes from, at least the intro part of it. But I changed it up after that. But. Okay, and then I repeated. That's the same. The second time through, I went. So that part's a little different. And all I'm doing, again, I've got my index finger down. It just stays down the whole time for that C part. I'm on the third string again. I'm going to do another hammer on to the second fret. That's a downstroke. Then I'm going to do an upstroke on the 
the B string or the um, the second string, which is actually a, a C note that I'm fretting here, but down, up, so. And then middle finger goes right back down to the second fret fourth string, and then we do another down, up. Okay, so that's really the first part of the melody. Pretty nice, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of fun. Even just that, you've, you've learned a lot. Now, here's some takeaways. I always like to kind of bundle these things in so you're not just limited to this composition. If you're playing rhythm guitar now and you've got a C chord, look at all the little lead notes that you can do even while playing rhythm. So now you can... Look at these little hammer-ons you can do. And be thinking about that as you're playing rhythm using this technique I'm showing you where you it's a call and response. And the response is always down up, down up, down up. So you can have so much fun just noodling around with a C chord like that. If you keep that rhythm pattern going, which is just, in my head, I always think of it like a heartbeat, down up, down up, down up, down up. And if you once you think of it that way, and you can feel it that way, the melody parts kind of take care of themselves. So anyway, a little takeaway there. All right, so from the beginning, let's take it from the start. Here I went. We go to the G7 chord. So, so what I did for that, now we're going to break away. I'm going to take my hand off of the C chord now to play this little lead part. And here's how you play it. It's uh, the first fret, uh, second string, third fret, second string, and we're going to slide up to the fifth fret on the second string. And then I've got my index finger down on the 3rd fret 1st string. And that's a down up. Now if you think about what that is, that little down up there, that's the rhythm part, that's the heartbeat, down up. Now even though we're playing a lead and I don't have a, the opportunity to, to play it with a chord, I'm still keeping that cadence going, even in my lead playing. That's why I went down up there. So it, fit, it fits right in when you hear it in timing. I guess I could have done that, but it just, to me, it felt right to keep that, that down up, that pulse going. Okay, so after we do that, then I'm going to go back to the 5th fret, 2nd string, slide down to the 3rd fret, back down to the 1st fret. It's all in the 2nd string. Now look at my right hand. Down, down down, down, up, down, down. Okay, and then I went. And all I did for that was, I'm still thinking C, so I'm back in position here with my index finger on the first fret, second string, and I got my middle finger down on the third fret, sec or, or the uh, second fret, third string, and I'm gonna play this is where it's kind of nice because since this is already down, I can double up and I can place two, these two strings, strings two and three, and they're going to kind of harmonize a little bit. And then I'll take my middle finger off. Ring finger goes down now on, on the uh, third fret fourth string. And again, I'm hitting, I'm bumping two strings there, so strings uh, four and three. And then middle finger goes down on the second fret, third, uh, fourth string. So you have. Kind of cool. And all of that is really just dancing around that C chord. And then I take my hand off the fretboard and hit the open strings three and four, which happen to be. Um, it's a G note and a D note. And that allows me to put my hand down on the first 
uh, fret first string, which is the G7 chord. Now, I'm, at this point, I'm not hit. I'm not touching um, strings five and six. I'm just playing the first four strings. All right. So after I hit this, the strings three and four, and then I strum the f uh, first four strings. Then there's a muted strum, and you'll see that in the tab. There, there's just a nothing happens. My hand just moves down to get in position so that I can play, and this is where the timing changes a little bit. I'm going to play up, down, up. So the up is on the one string, up, down. Down is brushing the chord, and then the up again is on the, the uh, one string. So it goes like this. Down, down, nothing, up, down, up. And then I come down with my ring finger on the third fret, uh, sixth string, and hit that low G, and do another strum to reiterate it. So there's the down stroke on that, and then there's a down stroke on the first four strings again. So all together it goes like this. That's the G part. Sometimes by not playing a note, it actually adds to the rhythm, and so you'll see a, you'll see that happen a lot. And it happens kind of instinctively the more you do of this, um, where you just you'll kind of skip a note. But the one thing you got to always do is keep your hand in motion. Your right hand never breaks. It's um, it's always kind of going like this. So. And then we're going to go into the next rhythm. Now, actually, before I move on, do that, um, let me back up and, and put all of this melody part. We'll skip the intro, but we'll get the melody uh, up to this point. Okay, and now from here, I play. Now I can keep my index finger down, just like we did with a C chord, I'm going to keep this index finger down on the first fret, first string, and I'm going to play. So that's the open fourth string, down stroke, uh, second fret, fourth string, and then I'm going to do a hammer on between uh, the second fret and the third fret on the fourth string. I'm going to use my, I'm going to keep my middle finger down, I'm going to hammer on with my ring finger. So. And then the strum part goes like this. So it's down, up, down. Now this is where we've gotten away a little bit. The, the rhythm has taken a little bit of a change, but we're going to go from the little heartbeat part that I explained on the C part. We'll get back to that. But sometimes it's just nice to break it up a little bit. So it's down, up, down. And then we're going to go. And that's just playing strings four and three. Take my ring finger off, so we're back here. Now this index finger stays down the whole time, but now that's playing. Uh, this middle finger is on the uh, second fret, uh, fourth string, and then we're going to take it off and play the open three and four strings. So, and then after I do that, I'm going to do a that and then a down stroke, and then I'm going to play. So you can see what I did. I did the same rhythm, but instead of going like that, I, this time I went, I played the open fourth string, second fret, and then I slid up to the fifth fret. So rhythmically it sounds like this. So you hit that note, and then you slide up. Now this, I'm not playing any, I'm not able to fret anything, but I am, I can play strings, um, and when that's actually the same note, but I'm, I can play strings three and two, because just on its own, without anything on the fretboard, strings four, three, and two are an open G chord. I'm sure most of you know that, but some may not. So that's what I'm doing, I'm going to play down, up, down. Slide back down to the 2nd fret, hand off the uh, 
fretboard so that I can put it down and come back and grab this uh, first fret first string which is that G7 chord and play it down up. So let's put it all together. We have the G part. And then I'm going to play this little run. That gets us back to the one chord. So for that, I've got my finger here. So I'm playing my G7 chord. Now I'm on the open D string. There's that little walk up, that hammer on again. We've already done this. And after that, I'm going to play down up. So in between each of these melody notes, we're going to play a down up. Watch this. There's the first one. And then I'm going to do... Keep, I keep this guy down the whole time. I'm going to hammer on to the third, second fret, third string with my middle finger. Down up. Take that off. Down up. Ring finger on the third fret, fourth string. Down up. So you can see what I'm doing. Between each of those notes, there's a down up. Note, down up, note, down up, note, down up. So... And then we go to the C. And to, then to get to that C, I can take my hand off the fretboard and I can just hammer on with my middle finger to the second fret, fourth string, and then I can build the top part of the C chord as I hammer that on. After I hammer it on, I'm going to do a downstroke. And then I'm going to go up, down, up, up, down, up ring finger on the 3rd fret 5th string to complete the C chord. And after you play this low C note, then you're, we're going to do down up. So, that's what it looks like. Okay, now at that point we go into the second half. Um, and I'm going to end this video here. I think that's a lot of information. Um, but I would like to go back over everything. I'll go through the whole thing slowly um, just so you have it as a final reference. Um, and then, um, you know, obviously this is something that's a lot easier to follow in tablature. I've got the tab for this and uh, you, can, you can follow along with it that way for the, those of you that like to print that out and watch it or look at it. All right, so here we go. Let's start this from the, from the very beginning. I'll go through it slowly. Pretty cool, huh? All right, in part two, we'll go into the, the second half and we'll learn the rest of that. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope there's been a few little takeaways for, for you so that you can get some ideas for how to play uh, a bluegrass style. Now, one thing a lot of bluegrass players will do, they'll get very familiar with a, a chord shape like what we just did, all the melodies you can play around a C and a G. Um, and then if they want to switch that to a different key, they'll just use a capo. So you could play that in different, that same style of what you just did there uh, in different keys that way. Um, all right, I'll see you in part two.